Hello students, welcome back. So we're going to be doing a colorization project and the goal of the colorization project is to evoke a specific emotion. Now you may have in the live class worked uh, to develop teams for a specific emotion such as happiness, calmness and peace, excitement and surprise. Or maybe you have an emotion that you'd like to evoke that's all your own and you're going to do a choose your own adventure. Okay, so whichever emotion you're going to evoke, you probably want to know a little bit about color theory. So I have posted this video. Let's see here. It's going to have some really smooth jazz music in the background and it's going to give you a very nice presentation of color, giving you examples of famous artworks. It will tell you about the primary, secondary, and tertiary colors, warm colors, and cool colors, and encourage you to really think about color as you intentionally uh, work towards evoking a, an emotion or a feeling or a specific meaning in your work. Next, I posted an article by Art Therapy and um, Color Psychology, the Emotional Effects of Colors is the title of this. And I just love this article because it answers many questions that you might be interested in. What is color psychology? Applying it to everyday life, the psychological effects of cool and warm colors. And then the psychology of your color for marketing and advertising. It's great to read things like that because then as you are um, internet shopping, you can actually consciously start to see the way that advertisers are using color to try to evoke certain emotions or actions in you, which is fun. And uh, so if you scroll down to the common psychological effects of colors, it lists each color and its color psychology. For example, white is purity, innocence, cleanliness, sense of space, neutrality, mourning. Um, so go through these colors and find the colors that match the type of emotions that you are intending to evoke. And it also says there's a related article, color meanings and symbolism. Oh, that could also be very nice. Look at, there we have the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and the secondary colors, purple, orange, and green, that are created by mixing the primary colors. And the meaning of colors, how do we see color? This looks like a fantastic article. Ah, the color wheel, oh, it's just wonderful. I wish I'd known about this one. Oh, this is fabulous. So like the different First Nations, have colors that represent their nations. How awesome, the meaning of the color red. Oh, this is just fabulous. Okay, so go through this stuff, you guys, and get prepared for your project to do it in a meaningful way. So let's just quick review fair use guidelines. Um, when you're searching for images to use, and of course in this class, if you want to use your own photographs, that's even better. Um, but if you are using photos from Creative Commons, then I'm gonna go ahead and um, show you how to do that real quick, just in case you forgot or are skipping around. Uh, so I'm gonna do a graduation, and I will click on images, and then I'm gonna click on tools, and that gives me my usage rights. And remember, you're looking for labeled for non-commercial reuse with modification because we're going to be modifying it in GIMP. Now, if you wanted to do something commercial, uh, you have a website and you're selling something, you're making money, labeled for reuse with modification would work for you. So just going to pick a, a fun graduation picture. I think I like this one right here. That is cool. It has a lot of potential to have fun with that in image uh, in GIMP. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that image and I'm going to open up GIMP. And once I'm inside GIMP, I'm going to create from 
clipboard. Okay, so I know that before we've done new and when you do that you get this template. And if you want to do a specific size template such as the US letter so you can print it, go for it. You don't have to create your new files that way. If you copy like I just did, there's that great option of create from the clipboard. Okay, and it makes your canvas automatically the size of your image. Now, here's the thing to be careful of. I noticed down here at the bottom, it's telling me that the scale of my image is 66%. I'm going to increase it to 100 just so I can see how big it is. Oh, that's a really nice size. It's perfect. It's not going to be pixelated for me. I love that. Okay, so uh, I need to figure out what color I'm going to use. What is the emotion that I'm trying to evoke in my viewer? And I've decided that I'm going with an emotion of pride and accomplishment and success. So I was doing a little bit of research and I was noticing that the color purple or violet um, represents pride, ambition, aristocracy, nobility, um, what else? Royalty, richness, extravagance, so uh, sophistication, inspiration, value. So these are emotions that I would like to evoke. So uh, coincidentally, purple just also happens to be our school colors. Go Lynx! And uh, this composition in the back is something that a student had done um, for me in image design and demonstrating different use of filters and things like that. And um, I added the Go Links on there. Go Links! For the sake of having your work saved, always make sure that you have your original image saved into a locked layer and then your work shown in other layers. This assignment, I only needed one layer, but in other assignments, you'll have more than one layer. So always save your layer work. If I ever have any doubt whether or not someone plagiarized something, I'm going to ask for your GIMP file. So make sure that you save that. So getting back to my image then, I would like to select the trees in the background. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that back to 66.7% so I can see the whole thing. And um, one of the things that I might be able to do to select and some of you have already noticed the fuzzy select tool. Um, the fuzzy select tool is great. Uh, threshold's important when using it, but what it does is it allows you to click and then it selects everything that was the color that you clicked. And then if you wanna select more colors, you hold down shift for adding and you just keep on clicking and it keeps adding more colors. So now I'm gonna add the color of her hands. I wanna add the green and um, I might need to turn up my threshold just a little bit because it is taking quite a while for me to get everything. So this little threshold right here, I'm going to increase it to 20 and see if that helps to select more quicker. Now the other thing that you can always do is zoom in. And see what's happening here is I'm also getting the color of the branches selected because they're similar to the colors in her in her uh, attire and in her hair and her skin tones. I want to go ahead and save. So save as. Locate your image design folder. Remember you're always going to put your name on your paper, right? So put your first and last name, and I'm going to color this. Call this colorization, and I will call it pride. That sounds good. And then click save. Okay. And then the great thing is I can see the title of my work up at the top. I know that it's saved and now I just always have to go save or control S to save my changes so I don't lose anything in case my computer crashes because that can happen. There we go. And so if you're getting into a situation like this where it just feels like, mm, taking forever and I can't even see anymore what's going on that is when you might go a different route so you have um, this free select tool which is fabulous 
and I recommend when you're using free select that you are zoomed in so that you can see closer the edges and so I'm going to do that right now I'm going to zoom in just on the hand here and I'm going to hit save a million times um, grab that free select tool I'm gonna hold down shift because I'm wanting to add to my selection and I'm just hitting enter so I'm holding down shift I'm drawing a circle I'm completing my circle if I get the yellow dot and I release my mouse and it doesn't close it off automatically just hit enter I don't know if it's just doing that because I'm making a video or if that is a new awesome feature of the 2019 version of GIMP sometimes improvements aren't really improvements right so um, I don't think I want this confetti in here so I'm gonna remove the confetti actually I do want that confetti in there I just realized but I don't want these leaves so I'm gonna hold down control when you want to subtract something from your selection you hold down control okay so I have a little bit of this arm I still need to add so I'm gonna hold down shift mm-hmm gotta find the end where I started and I can't there it is Okay, perfect. Um, I can scroll and now I can get rid of all this stuff out here. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna just go ahead and select none and I'm gonna start over and I'm just gonna use this tool. And I'm gonna make sure I can see the whole picture and I'm just going to go ahead and just draw a basic line around everything and I'm going to go back and fix the details later, but I'll get a basic outline of her. And, you know, some students are like, oh, I'm just going to do that outline. And then you kind of draw a circle and come around back to that dot. Hit enter if you have to, if it doesn't automatically create your marching ants. Um, but this isn't good enough. You need to zoom in. So don't take shortcuts because that's not what this is about. This is about creating quality. So click save grab your zoom tool and then zoom in on an area. So I'm gonna zoom in here and I need to fix this edge right here. So I'm gonna do that by grabbing the free select tool and I'm gonna hold down shift whenever I need to add to my selection and I'm going to hit control when I need to subtract something. So holding down shift, I'm just gonna go around the edge of the hand and the arm and then I'm just gonna draw a circle around that area until I get to the yellow dot, release and hit enter, okay? I need to subtract some of this green. I'm gonna hold down control to subtract it and I'm just gonna draw a little circle around it and once again hit enter. So I know shift to add the knuckle. I know that this is a little confusing, but you know what? As you spend time in GIMP or Photoshop, doing this you actually get used to it control to erase but it is hard when you first do it okay shift to add and remember you have to go back to start where that yellow dot is and click enter okay that looks good and then I can just kind of scroll down the page and keep working at adding and control subtracting. That is looking very good. Now I want to invert my selection. Right now I've got her selected and I'm actually going to invert this. So
So select invert. And I did that because I want the background selected. So you can see the marching ants are going around the entire outer edge and around her indicating that the background is selected. So now I'm going to colorize her and I know I'm going to use purple to represent her success and royalty and pride. So colorize is now down here and it automatically switched it to that, but that's okay. Hue means color. So I'm gonna change the hue to a purple, a nice UTVA color. You also have saturation. Remember to add color and intensity is to saturate it just like a sponge. If you saturate a sponge with water, that means you filled it up. To saturate with color, you're filling it up. If you desaturate and someone was asking about making an image black and white, you remove the color. So that's another way to make a black and white image. And if you would like to make part of your image black and white, that's absolutely fine. You can do that. So I'm just trying to think what hue I want. I think I'm going to go about right there. And then you can also adjust the lightness. And don't worry if you're losing detail because I'm going to show you how to adjust the brightness and contrast in just a moment. So you might want to hold off on lightness for now because that brightness and contrast does the same similar thing. So I'm just going to adjust my hue and my saturation here and I'm going to go OK. And then brightness and contrast, the most important thing ever in photography. You always adjust your brightness and contrast, okay? So you can make it brighter. And now this is what contrast does. It increases the blacks and the whites simultaneously. Photography needs to have pure black and pure white. So I'm not sure where I want, I mean, technically. Now, if the effect you're going for is to make it more blurry and soft, then you want to decrease your contrast. Okay, so go for the effect that you're going for. But there's a little dance between the brightness and the contrast. So find that perfect balance. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you're going to have sharp contrast on her, then the contrast in the background needs to match. Otherwise, it's not going to look right. I'm going to go ahead and... I think I'm going to lighten it up just a touch and I think that's pretty good for now. I'm going to have that off in the background and I'll go, okay. And remember you have a preview box here. So if you weren't seeing your preview, just make sure you have that X there just in case you're like, I'm doing mine and nothing's happening. Click your preview. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and save this as um, uh, version one. Okay. So Whatever I've done before I colorize this background, I still have that in my uh, in my original version. So I could go back to that one if I wanted to. It's great to save things as versions. So next, I think I want to colorize her. I'm just curious. I, I wonder if I should just colorize like her cap and gown or her all together, but that's the joy of it is I can play around with it and see what I like. So I'm going to go ahead and select invert again. So now she is selected. The marching ants are no longer going around the outside of the background. She is selected. The marching ants are going all the way around her. So go to colors and go to colorize again. And I can pick a secondary color, a secondary hue. cancel that right now because I really um I think I'm going to keep her skin and maybe I'm going to do something just with this green here so I think I'll go select none to get rid of my selections and I'm going to zoom in and just get this green area and change that up a little bit um Probably a really good idea, something I should have shown you guys to do, and I'm regretting that I didn't right now, is to create a, a layer, like a duplicate layer of your image. Yeah. 
you can go back and copy it. Copy image, and then you can come back and edit. Paste as new layer. Okay, now that's the real original. Do that. Get that original in there. Lock that up, and then just move that down for me to the bottom if it'll let you. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this one. Okay, delete layer. So when you right click, there's all those options. Okay, so that is the purple layer colorized. Nice. Um, I've got my original. If I hide that layer on top, I can see what I started off with. So if you could be so kind as to make sure your original layer, <laughs> this is um, my work. So you can name that other layer my work and this one can be original. I can see naming has becoming an issue for me. Okay, so make sure you're on your work. You don't want that one locked, otherwise you won't be able to work in it. Um, but lock that other one, and you can actually hide it so you don't see it anymore. So I'm going to go in and just select. Oh. Okay, so now that I've done that, I need to decide what color I'm going to do this one. And there's a color that I really like that's already in the image. It's actually quite gorgeous, and it's this red right here. I like that. I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit and take a peek at that. I really like that. So I think I'm going to go for something. Look, at, it almost looks like there's a little face back there, little eyes and a nose. Um, yeah, I think I will go ahead and go for kind of that red color just so it fits in with the confetti. So let's see. Colors, colorize. I'm going to try to get that hue a little on the red. Oh, that's looking very good. I could saturate that a little bit more if I wanted to, and it really helps that confetti right there pop, doesn't it? I like that. So I can click OK on that and go to Colors and Brightness and Contrast. Remember, I always want you to adjust Contrast and Brightness just to make sure that throughout your image, uh, your, color, your colors and the contrast in your foreground and background and any new images that you add, like you want them to match. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK there and then select none and I've got my two areas colorized and what do you think? Does she look like she's proud in this moment? I think so. Um, something else really fun that I could do is select her skin and turn her black and white. So let's go for it. to save as version 2. I'm going to go back to my colorize and I'm going to um, pick my hue. So I was thinking like if I did a little pink um, and I changed the lightness on that and then I desaturated it, I could get like a pink effect. Or you can also go for your sapia tones too. So there is like over in the yellow area. Let's saturate this a little bit more. So there's sapia, right? 
So that's a way to get sepia tones. You just take out some of the color and just add a little bit of that sepia tone. So that's something that you can do to give it a nostalgic look. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and then go to brightness and contrast and I'm going to increase my contrast or possibly decrease it. I just want to make sure that I can see her fingers, the details there. And I think I'm okay with that. I'm going to select none. And what do you think? Do you like that? Was it worth it? Can't totally tell right now. I'm going to try, uh, hmm, this would be tough. Let's see. Zoom in. Challenge here would be her face. Wow, because she's got all of this confetti. Then what I do, is I'm going to invert the selection, select invert. So now um, everything except the confetti is selected. Take two, the issue with the confetti on the face. Maybe by now you've thought, oh, I think there might have been an easier way to do that, Mrs. Jarreau. So yeah, there was. So here I have my original image and some of you might have caught on that I could have gone in and selected her face first instead of the confetti first. But at the time, let's see, graduation, confetti two. Um, at the time, I was kind of like in the moment and not really thinking. So what if you had gone around and you had done all the work of selecting her face and her hands first? You could have done all of that together at the same time, right? So this is the rough. And of course, you all know that you have to go in and get your edges really good. I could have done um, the arm at the same time. I could have done all the skin at the same time and that would have actually been preferable. But of course, when you're making a video and doing something for the first time, you're not really thinking in hindsight, are you? You're in your moment. So let's say that I've gone through and I've got the hand really nicely selected. I've zoomed in. I've got everything up here nice selected and I need to get rid of that confetti. So easy, right? So I'm going to take my zoom tool and I'm going to get right in there. Uh, so hold down control and now you can just subtract the confetti. So easy. I can't find my beginning. All right. Uh, so I think that this way is probably a lot easier and um, yeah makes a lot more sense than having to do the invert selection and thinking through things backwards, right? So I'm going to go back to 100% and grab your colors, colorize, and you could just make it a black and white. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, for now, I'm just going to go all the way black and white since I show you how to do sapia in the other video and I'm just going to lighten it up just a touch. Um, remember when you do black and white that you absolutely must do brightness and contrast because look at her. She's all washed out. Do you see how in the original photograph, which is done so nicely, there's dark black actually in the creases, right? And you've got contrasts of bright whites. There's no white. Her teeth should be white. This confetti should be white and she needs pure blacks in her shadows. So every time you make something black and white, 
In fact, every time you do anything in GIMP, you need to go to brightness and contrast. And if I see that you don't go to brightness and contrast to adjust your pictures and make them pop, that's gonna be my first clue that you're not watching my, my videos and you're not learning the objectives of how to make great image design. So notice when I increase how much that pops. I can get really dramatic and it looks awful, right? So there's an interplay between brightness and contrast and you've gotta find just the right balance. So, and you want it to match your background too. Okay, there, too much contrast. You want it to match what you've got in the rest of your image, okay? So look at the look at the depth of the darks in your image, okay? Don't make your contrast more than what's already there. So that seems to match a little bit, but the problem is that her face, she needs it, it needs to be a little brighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the lightness and then adjust my brightness and contrast again. And now you're noticing, look at pure whites. Remember we said her teeth need to be white, her fingernails should be white, she should have some white highlights there. And um, the more intense I go with my contrast, the whiter those will get. So I think that that, however, right now just kind of matches the background. So I'm gonna click OK. I'm going to go back and zoom to 100% so I can see most of it. I'm gonna go select none, and that looks pretty good. Now, if I were to uh, go to colors and brightness and contrast, and adjust the contrast on the entire image, that would be really nice. So I can really make her whole body pop. And that really does help the colors to pop that you didn't see quite as well before in the original photo. I mean, they were popping, but not like that. And now I think I'm just gonna go ahead to brightness and contrast and I'm gonna adjust the brightness and contrast on the entire image all together. And notice how it really, really popped when I increased the contrast on that. So she is popping. So I'm going to click Save As, uh, and I'll just call it Pride and Final.xcf and hit Enter. And then I need to export it, File, Export As, now slide this little guy over a little bit so you can see your picture this time because I'm going to show you what this optimizing is really about here. So we're going to type in JPEG, right, and then click export. And that's when your image optimization window comes in. So be sure to click preview. And I'm at 177 kilobytes. What did I tell you guys? Go up to 500, not over. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I can go up to what, 99%, not bad. Got it just below 500 kilobytes, so it's gonna load really fast. When I go to open it, it's gonna pop right open. Okay, and then I'm just going to click Explore after that, but what I wanted to show you is that- If you decrease the quality too low, notice how it became pixelated. So image optimization is all about getting your image so that it's nice and sharp, right? Yeah, the file size is still small. And I'm gonna go ahead and go up to my 99% because I'm gonna try to maintain as much of my image pixelation as I can and keep it nice and high quality. It is overkill, I mean, it doesn't need to be this large, but I told you that you could go up to 500, so go ahead. Okay, and there it is. Uh, if I put that at 100%, it is large. Um, it is looking so good. I love it. So let's compare it to the original. So I'm just gonna put the eye on to make that bottom layer visible and watch where, where I came from. Yeah! Look at that pop, isn't that cool? I didn't even have to do anything to the colors. I mean, except select every single one of them. But other than that, I think it looks really good. So uh, go ahead and post that um, in the forum where uh, you were told to post it in the directions. Um, you just got done saving the JPEG of that. So you can save the JPEG or you can take a screenshot of it using your snipping tool if you want to, however you wanna do it. If you decide to do the snipping tool, uh, make sure that you do view, zoom, fit image and window so that for sure you're getting your whole image. But yeah, that's one way to do it. You can just copy it on your snipping tool. You can also save it on your snipping tool, okay? But um, for the sake of having your work saved, always make sure that you have your original image saved into a locked layer 
and then your work shown in other layers. This assignment, I only needed one layer, but in other assignments, you'll have more than one layer. So always save your layer work. If I ever have any doubt whether or not someone plagiarized something, I'm going to ask for your GIMP file. So make sure that you save that. All right, thanks. See you in class.